What's up guys, my name is Brandon and I've been using iOS 14.5 beta 4 all week long on multiple devices and in this video I wanted to give you guys an update on the performance and battery life along with the bugs, bug fixes, and even some additional new features. So this is going to be the weekly follow up. I do these every single weekend on the latest iOS releases. So if you want to keep up to date with all the latest iOS updates, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. So we're also going to be discussing when to expect the final version of 14.5 and upcoming Apple products and an upcoming potential April Apple event. So let's go ahead and get into it. So let's first start off with some additional new features and changes here in 14.5 beta 4. Now, of course, I covered a few changes in my initial what's new video. And if you missed that, I will leave that linked down in the description below. But one thing I noticed that's new here in 14.5 beta 4 is if we go to our settings general and then to software update and then go to automatic updates, there is a pretty big difference here. So I'm going to switch this to light mode and compare this to the old version. So on the left is iOS 14.5 beta 3, on the right is beta 4. So you can see here a pretty big difference right away. So a lot of verbiage changes. So now it says download new updates instead of download iOS updates. We also do not have the automatically header text right there or the little subtext underneath of it that says iPhone will automatically download updates over Wi-Fi. And if we go ahead and toggle on the download new updates, you can see we also have a new section there, a new toggle there for install security updates. That was not there before. And this is pretty interesting because it looks like we're going to possibly start getting updates, you know, that are just for security separated from like the major iOS releases. So for example, like the point of a point update, so like the 14.4.1, that could be different than like a 14.5 release. So you don't have to install the security updates if you don't want to, or you can only install the security updates. So we don't know for sure what Apple's going to do there, but it is pretty interesting that we have that new toggle now. So this whole section has been updated here in 14.5 beta 4. We also get another change with the MagSafe charging animation. So as I pointed out in my original What's New video, I talked about how the animation has returned here in beta Beta 4. So it was gone in beta 3 and previous versions, but you can see here now when you put the MagSafe puck on the back to wirelessly charge, it will have the animation. Now what's new is that if you go into low power mode, so if we go into our settings and then go to our battery, turn low power mode on, continue, lock the screen, and we go ahead and put this on the back of our phone, you can see that the animation has a yellow accent to it now instead of green. So that is new in beta 4 to you know signify that you are in fact in low power mode. So I do like that little minor change there here in beta 4. We also get another change in Apple Music and this is not specifically for 14.5 beta 4. This is for everybody but it was just a recent change by Apple server side and it's at the radio station so your personal radio stations no longer show your profile picture as like the album artwork and now has this you know red really cool looking artwork there and I actually like that a lot better because before it would just kind of show my face real big and it looked kind of weird to be pressing play on so I like that they made the change so it does not include a big picture of like your profile picture as the album artwork for your personal radio station and while we're talking about music I did also want to point out that handoff works a lot more consistently now in beta 4 so you can see here when I pull my HomePod mini closer it works pretty much every single time now so before it would work like maybe half the time and on beta 3 it was like a quarter of the time but now finally in beta 4 it seems to work like 95 percent of the time it rarely doesn't work when I push my iPhone closer to the HomePod. It's still very sensitive. I wish that it would not be as sensitive. I wish there was a setting that can change the sensitivity for the handoff feature because sometimes I'm not even really that close to it and it starts vibrating my phone and it pops up and you know kind of stops me from what I was doing. So it's kind of annoying sometimes but the handoff feature with the HomePod mini is much better here in beta four. So things have improved with the HomePod mini and the handoff feature, but things have actually gotten a little bit worse with the AirPods Max. And this could have to do with the new firmware update that went out for the AirPods Max just recently. And this beta, they're kind of just not lining up perfectly yet. We may have to wait for the final release, but I did notice that music would sometimes randomly stop playing. And when I press play in here, I wouldn't be able to hear anything. Like it would show it's playing, it would show this moving, but I would not be able 
able to hear anything in my headphones. Sometimes I'd have to like close out of the music application, force close and open it back up. And that was just a minor bug I noticed here on beta four, specifically with the AirPods Max. Now also I did wanna point out that the AirPods Max, and once again, I don't know if this is because of iOS 14.5 beta four or the new firmware updates. I believe it's 14.5 beta four, but when I press the buttons on the AirPods Max, I do not get any type of noise. Like it used to beep before when I would switch from transparency to noise cancellation or vice versa, but now you do not get any indication that it's switched. You kind of just have to listen for it. And I really do not like that. So I'm guessing that's a bug. I don't think the Apple would ever make that a feature where you don't hear a sound when you switch the modes. But that is one thing I've noticed as well with the AirPods Max here on 14.5 beta four. But aside from those AirPods Max bugs, I really have not had any other bug here in beta four. And I mean, that's crazy because I had a ton of bugs in beta three. I talked to you guys about all the bugs in beta three in my follow-up video and my initial what's new video. And even in the beta four, what's new video, I talked about a lot of the bugs that have been fixed and I can confirm, you know, a week later that I really don't have any bugs. And I mean, that does kind of line up because we do have an A at the end of the build number here on beta four, which does indicate we are very close to final and performance and bug wise. I mean, this is pretty much ready for prime time. I mean, maybe one more beta potentially in RC. We'll talk about that near the end of this video, but as far as performance goes overall, the performance here on beta four is excellent. I mean, it feels really, really solid. It does not feel like a beta anymore. Beta three really felt like a beta, had a lot of bugs, had a lot of issues. I had random freeze ups, things wouldn't work. You know, AirPods would disconnect. A lot of different issues that I've talked about in previous videos, but here in beta four, I've had an excellent experience overall on every device. So I've been using the iPhone 12 in this video, but on the iPhone 12 Pro, which I use every day, I do use the beta every single day on my main device no issues there. And on the iPad pro, no issues there. Those are the main three devices. These three devices are the main ones I use every single day. And I've not had any issues, which is a really, really good sign here for 14.5, especially given how many new features and changes are in this update. There are a ton of new features and changes as you guys have seen if you followed along with every one of the beta videos now as far as battery life goes battery life is also better here in beta 4. this is the best battery life i've gotten so far in ios 14.5 better than beta 1 2 or 3. 2 was probably the best right behind beta 4 because beta 1 and beta 3 really did not impress me too much with the overall battery life but battery life, nothing to complain about here with 14.5 beta four. I still do not think it's on par with iOS 14.4 or 14.4.1, but maybe by the time the final comes out, it will be about the same or even better. So we'll have to wait and see on that. Of course, I will let you guys know when that gets released, when 14.5 gets released to the public. And before we talk about when we can expect to see 14.5 released to the public and potentially a new beta or an RC build, let's go ahead and talk about the community poll. So I did go ahead and post a community poll up on my channel on the community tab. If you guys didn't know, I do post those every single week as well. So if you head over to the community tab right here, you can see I asked about seven hours ago, how has iOS 14.5 beta four been running for you so far? And leave a comment with the device you are using. So about 9,000 votes. So thank you to everybody who voted in this. It really does help out. You can see 16% of people said excellent, 7% said good, 4% said not so good, and 73% are still not on the beta. So 16% on excellent, that's pretty good. And if we go down to beta three, you can see that's much better than beta three. So only 2%. But that is, you know, a big difference when we're talking about thousands of votes. So 14% versus 16% is a good sign. 74% and 73% not on the beta. So it looks like maybe somebody jumped on after that. So 15% here on beta two. So it looks like 16% is the highest. Of course, that could be because we don't have all the votes in yet, but still a good amount of people are having a great experience here. And you can see some of the comments here as well. Jason said, getting unbelievably good battery life on the 12 Pro Max. Use my phone for work every day and I'm ending the day between 60 and 70% battery. That is impressive. And that is really good to hear coming from a beta software at that. So here and there, I get a notification saying no SIM card and I'll have to restart my phone. Interesting, I've not had that. Let me know if you guys have had that issue with a no SIM card that used to be a bug back in the day. On iPhone 10, my reminders haven't been syncing well on iCloud, but battery life much improved compared to last beta. So good to hear there about the battery life. Smart tech also says much better battery life on my iPhone 7, but still having airdrop issues. It does work more times than earlier betas, but it's still a little buggy. So I also had issues with airdrop in previous betas, but I've had no issues with airdrop here on beta four whatsoever. I really didn't have any on beta three either. That was really beta one and two. 
good, but still having the geotagging bug on photos and animation glitches on the home control platter and control center. Interesting. I've not had any bugs with geotagging, I don't believe. If you guys have had any bugs with geotagging in photos, let me know in a comment. I've not even heard about that one there. Sometimes the AirPods connected notification stays at the top of the screen for a couple of minutes on my iPhone 11. Also, I can't connect to my VPN 80% of the time. So that's interesting. I'm not sure why that would show up at the top of your screen for a couple of minutes unless you are going back and forth between two different devices. As far as the VPN goes, I'm not sure about that either. I've not heard anybody else with issues with VPN on this beta whatsoever. So maybe check the VPN. Beta 4 has been a solid step ahead in terms of bug fixes. The battery alone is just so much better as well. So you can see a lot of people having a very similar experience to me in terms of the overall performance and the battery life, which is really, really good news. I'll just read a couple more here. Great battery life and much better standby time on the 12 mini. Somebody's having a weird touch ID unlock glitch on the SE 2020. Masood here says battery life is great on the iPhone 11. And then you can see that Emily says, I have an iPhone 12, no more annoying Bluetooth bugs for me. Brett says noticeably better battery life compared to beta three. And then also Richard says iPhone 11 pro home screen, some lag happens intermittently. So I'm not sure what kind of lag you're facing there, but at least it's just intermittent. It's not constant. So yeah, guys, that is everything that you guys had to say about iOS 14.5 beta four pretty much you know good across the board which is really good because that does line up with my experience on this version as well so now let's talk about when we can expect to see the next apple release for 14.5 whether that's a beta or an rc build let's talk about the final release date as well so if you guys have been following my videos you would know that we talked about a potential apple event on the 23rd march 23rd well now it appears that that is not happening until april so it's not going to be quite as easy to guess when 14.5 will be released to the public and now since we don't have an event next week that does lead me to believe that we're going to have at least another week until the final release so next week the week of the 22nd so either on the 22nd or the 23rd i can see a beta 5 coming or it's also possible to see an rc build so one of those two are coming next week possibly both so we could even see a beta 5 on monday and then maybe the rc on like a thursday or a friday and then the week of the 29th or the 30th, maybe the 29th or the 30th, I should say, we will see iOS 14.5 released to the public. Now, there is also the possibility that it gets released later on, like in the beginning of April, although I still think that we'll see 14.5 at the end of March. So it's really hard to say right now, but as of right now, I can see the final being released on the 29th or the 30th. We'll have to wait and see. It's hard to tell with Apple these days. They've been really unpredictable. They've really been throwing curveballs consistently for the past like year, year and a half. So it's really hard to say, but of course you guys know to follow me on Twitter if you want to see minute by minute updates. And of course I will post here on YouTube as well when those new updates get released. And by the way, at that upcoming Apple event, which we can probably expect to see in April, we are expecting to see a new iPad Pro, AirTags, and potentially new AirPods. Although leakers are now saying that the AirPods 3 will be released later in the year, not in the first half of this year. So the AirPods are probably not gonna be released but we should see a new iPad Pro and possibly the AirTags as well. Maybe something else that Apple is keeping as a surprise. So we'll wait and see on that. I will be going live here on the channel as well if Apple does in fact have an event in early April. So just stay tuned. A lot of good stuff coming up here on the channel. But if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future iOS update videos. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.